Hi everyone, so from TradingEdge.com, a quick laptop for gold and silver price for the week of May 28th to June 1st and a short recap from May 21st to the 25th, so let's get started. This chart shows both gold and silver prices normalized to the end of the previous week, May 18th, and as you can see, both gold and silver continued the downward trend on a weekly scale. Even though both gold and silver rose on Thursday and Friday, they still ended up nearly 1% below their starting point. So what happened last week that may have affected bullion prices? There is still the ongoing speculation around Greece whether or not it will exit the European Union with all the you know, ramification and the anxiety that revolves around it. The euro took another took another tumble and declined by nearly 2% against the US dollar, dragging along with it the Australian dollar and also the Canadian dollar and many other currencies. So this speculation might also have an adverse effect on gold and silver being that this, uh, the, the euro is strongly linked with bullion prices. There were positive reports for the U.S. Mar uh, housing market. Existing home sales rose uh, in April. Also, the new home sales report also increased. So this may have also had some positive effect on the U.S. dollar. And there's the weak Indian rupee that keeps uh, falling against the U.S. dollar and reached a 56.4, a very low record. If this uh, downward trend will continue, it may also have some adverse effect on, on bullion, seeing that India is, um, is the leading country in importing gold. So as the rupee uh, depreciates against the US dollar, it means that uh, bullion will be pricier in India. There's of course the US jobless claims that didn't move much and continue to remain nearly flat at 370,000. So this will also have, didn't have much of an effect on the US dollar, but if it won't uh, start to, if it won't have some new developments in this front, it could have an adverse effect on the US dollar eventually. Okay, so there are many news items and reports for the upcoming week of May 28th to June 1st. Keep in mind that on uh, May 28th, there is a holiday in, in the US, so the, the markets won't be open. But on Tuesday, there's a US consumer confidence report that'll come out. According to the previous report, the consumer confidence index remained unchanged in April. The current expectations are that the April index may, may decline. This report might affect commodities and also consequently in, in other the US dollar and also other other fronts. On Wednesday, there's the European the Euro, Euro area monetary development which will uh, show the development of M1, M3, and private loans. In the previous report, the annual rate of M3 sharply rose to 3.2% and M1 increased to 2.7%. If M1 and M3 will continue to increase, uh, this could serve as another indicator for the rising inflation pressures in the euro area, and it may affect the upcoming ECB interest rate decision that will be held next week. When, on Wednesday, there's also the U.S. pending home sales report. In the previous report, the pending home sales index increased by 4.1%. These data are another indicator for the developments in the American real estate market. And based on last week's uh, results of housing sales, the new and existing, the pending home sales may continue to rise. In such a case, the U.S. dollar may also strengthen. On Wednesday, the ECB president will give a speech. This time he will do it in the in the European Policy Council in Brussels, given the recent changes in the in Greece and the fragile state in which the several European Union's countries are at. If Draghi will uh, if President Draghi will continue will refer to ECB's policy, it may also have some effect on the US on the euro and consequently commodities prices and bullion prices as well. On Thursday, there's also the German retail sales report. If it will show some uh, progress, it could ha it might uh, curb some of the downward trend of the euro that was the case throughout uh, most of May. On Thursday, there's also the U.S. jobless claims. Since it continued to be stagnant at 307,000, if it will break from this uh, rate and sharply rise or sharply decline, it could have some effect on forex markets and consequently commodities markets as well. And on Thursday, there's also the U.S. estimated U.S. GDP for the first quarter. This will be the second estimate. In the previous estimate, the, growth, the annual growth rate of the U.S. economy was 2.2%. If this will be 
slightly different, if there will be a major difference in the second estimate, it could have some ramifications on the projections of the future progress of the U.S. economy and also have some uh, short-term effects on forex and commodities markets as well. There is, of course, China's manufacturing PMI. China is among the leading countries right after India in importing gold and silver, so it will be interesting to see whether or not there will be some changes in the PMI. In the last report, the, man the manufacturing PMI increased to 53.3, which means it's not only that China's manufacturing is uh, expanding, but also at a slightly faster pace. If this trend will continue, it might have some positive effect on, the, on gold and silver. There is also, Can on Friday, there is Canada's GDP by industry report. This report will present development in major industries, industrial sectors, for March. In the previous report, for February, the real growth domestic product edged down by 0.2%. This report may affect the strength of the Canadian dollar, which is strongly linked with commodities prices. And there's also on Friday two interesting and very important reports. There's the U.S. ISM manufacturing PMI. And uh, during April, this index rose to 54.8, which means manufacturing is growing at a faster pace. If this index will continue to, to show some progress, it could have some positive effect on the U.S. dollar and consequently commodities prices as well. And finally, the main report of the week will be, of course, the U.S. non-farm payroll report that will come out on Thursday, on Friday. In the previous report, the non-farm payroll employment rose by only 115,000. This was the second month in which the rates weren't, the employment didn't rise as much as it was during the first quarter of 2012. Back then, it was around the 200,000 per month. So if the, this will continue, if the employment will continue to dwindle and not show some uh, sharp uh, increases in employment, it could have some adverse effect on the U.S. dollar and also have positive effect uh, on gold and silver. Bear in mind that this, this relation is not uh, written in stone, but usually in the last uh, two years at least, there is a strong uh, link between the non-farm payroll report the results and gold and silver prices movement on the day of publication. So if this report will be a, a positive, it could have some negative effect on gold and vice versa. In the last report, uh, gold and silver slightly declined after another a less impressive result. Okay, that's it for more on gold and silver. Welcome to check out my blog at tradingenergy.com. Thank you for listening and have an excellent week.